Hello, internet people. Landon is back with another video. So today, we are going to talk about all of these lovely wheels I have in front of me and compare them. So, is the InMotion V8F the light, nimble little guy for you? Or should you go for the big old chonky boy veteran Sherman? Stick around to find out. So I think it's probably best we show you the advertised specs of all these first. Um, I'm going to do the Vanna White. So here we are starting at the bottom with the frisky InMotion V8F. If you want an inexpensive short commuter wheel, this is the wheel for you. So if I had to compare this wheel with the car, it would be the Mazda Miata. It's got a tiny little wheel, 16, but it's narrow and it is nimble. And it's not about miles per hour, it's about smiles per hour. And in that department, this wheel does not disappoint. So who is this wheel for? I would say it's definitely 100% for somebody who's just starting out. Uh, if you're super heavy, I mean, we've trained heavy guys on this before. I still don't recommend it though, just because it's got a small battery and a small motor. But hey, if you're just going out and getting groceries five kilometers away, no problem at all. If you're in a flat area and you don't want to be a speed demon, this thing is fine. You can throw it anywhere. Fits in a suitcase even. It's so small. So who is this wheel for? This wheel is definitely for a beginner, somebody who's just starting out or somebody who doesn't want a serious wheel, somebody who's happy going at a slow speed, not going very far, sticking to paved roads, maybe the occasional little bit of dirt. This thing is awesome for that. Another thing it's awesome for is keeping as a spare wheel. If you guys ever have a wheel break and it's down for a while, it sucks. So having a spare one around that's inexpensive that you can still ride on is nice to have. It's also nice to have as a spare for somebody who wants to learn. You can give anybody this wheel and they're going to have a good time with it. It's not too dangerous. Just give them some gear and they'll be good to go. This isn't the best off-roading wheel. Due to its light size, tiny wheel, and low pedals. You can clip pedals and this tire can go up from under you quickly if you do something wrong. You can go off-roading a little bit with it if you want, but it is not ideal. Not ideal at all. So here we are on the InMotion V10F. This is the InMotion V8F's big brother. The V8F was the Mazda Miata. This is definitely the Honda Civic. You're just getting a little bit more weight, speed, power, bigger tire, and of course, costs a little bit more money. With a slightly bigger tire, slightly wider tire, and a little bit more weight, you're getting way more stability in the high speed. So if you like cruising like this, you're probably gonna want the V10F. This wheel is definitely a jump up in price from the V8F. And so if you're just gonna start out and you're not sure how much you like it, and you're planning on buying a more expensive wheel later on, just go with the V8F. It's still a great wheel, but if you want to spend a little bit more money and have something that you can sort of grow into a little bit, something that you're going to be happy with for a long time, I would go with the V10F. It's still at a nice price point, you know, you're still less than half the price of a Sherman. So you can have a good wheel, you can take lots of places, it's got good range, good speed, good quality, and still relatively affordable. Off-roading with this wheel, although not ideal, is much better than the V8F. It just feels more planted, more stable, and I feel like I'm not gonna eat shit nearly as much riding this one on the trails. So if you're doing a lot of off-roading, this wheel is not for you, but it can still do it. So here we are on the Kingsong 18XL. This is what everyone calls the Honda Accord of EUCs, and for good reason. 
This wheel is just so comfortable. It's a very reliable wheel. And you know what? It's really not that much different than the V10F. It's just more comfortable, more range, and it's got that 18 inch wheel, which just makes it more stable. This is a wheel that you can take out and you can ride all day, and it's just gonna be a nice place to be. We're obviously bumping up to a little bit more speed now, and it is noticeable, but it's not great. So who is this wheel for? This wheel is definitely for somebody who wants a mid-range cruiser. This thing is just a sweet cruiser. It's got a pretty big battery in it. So if you're living in the city and you do a lot of miles, but you don't want a big heavy Sherman or something like that, this is a great option. It's still pretty small. You can put it in the back of most trunks. You can pick it up with one hand and it'll get you places. It'll get you a lot of places. So how is the off-road performance on the 18XL? Well, it's not bad. I'm not gonna say it's good either. No suspension, it's got a thin wheel. So if you're doing a lot of off-roading, this is definitely not it for you. And here we are on the Kingsong S18. Now I don't really know where to place this wheel because it's like somebody took the 18XL and put a lift kit on it and cut the gas tank in half. And that's kind of where we're at with this guy. I've already done a full review on this wheel. So if you want more details, you can go watch that video. But who is this wheel for? This wheel is for somebody who wants to eat up trails or they just want the smoothest riding experience possible on the road. For that, you are giving up some battery that is on the 18XL. This is a little bit smaller battery, so don't expect the range, but definitely expect the comfort. I'm still a little bit biased with this wheel because this is my personal wheel. I just love it so much. It's just the most comfortable ride and it just goes over stuff like this that I thought I was gonna be crashing on the other wheels and I'm totally comfortable. A lot of crashes are due to people not knowing what's in front or hitting a bump or hitting a crevice and the wheel starts to become unstable. This thing, you can ride over so much stuff and you are totally stable the whole time. One thing you need to know though, is if you're a heavier rider, do not push this wheel. This wheel has a maximum speed of 50 kilometers an hour. I'm 170 pounds and I have it set to 42 kilometers an hour. The reason being is it has a large motor and a small battery and you can get something called voltage shag and you can get a cutout. So this wheel is definitely a little more prone to cutout. It doesn't mean it's dangerous, you just have to be aware of it and be careful. Some things I don't like about this wheel is it's a pain in the ass to work on. It's, uh, it's a lot of screws and a lot of parts to do a tire change. Some of the plastics are a little bit flimsy, although they have held up well for me. I have to say though, it's a beautiful wheel. I really like the look of this wheel a lot. And here we are, the king of the jungle, the veteran Sherman. This guy's got the biggest wheel, the biggest battery, he's the heaviest, and he's by far the most expensive. But you get a lot of wheel for your money. So plus sides is this thing is stable. It's so heavy and it's got that big 20 inch wheel. And that just makes it wanting to stay in the same direction no matter what you do. So it takes a little more effort to turn it, but it's not something you can't get used to. It rides over bumps and potholes definitely a lot easier than the small wheels and it's not going to throw you off balance. This is the only wheel I'm reviewing today that actually has a screen that you can look down on. And it's freaking awesome. You can see the speed, you can see your battery percentage, the voltage. It's awesome. I wish all wheels had this. And so who is this wheel really for? I mean, this is for somebody who is money no object, wants the biggest, best, baddest, heaviest wheel they can get their hands on. And you know what? This is a great option. Obviously there's the Monster Pro. There's some newer wheels coming out that are gonna compete in this category. But this is a tried, tested, and proven model. I think it's on its fourth iteration and it's got a lot of the kinks worked out of it. It's a great, reliable wheel and it's built like a tank. So how is this wheel in the off-road? Well, it's not bad. The big wheel definitely makes it more stable. It does not have suspension, however, so you gotta use your legs a little bit more. 
and because it's just so heavy you gotta really put a lot more effort into getting it to do the things you need it to do for me i still pick the s18 for off-roading but you know what there's a lot of people that would probably be happy to off-road on this thing as well especially things like you know well-groomed off-road trails this thing you could just eat up trails with some things i don't like about this wheel is just mostly the portability it's so heavy it was so hard to put on that table. It's hard to lift up and put it in trunks. It's hard to bring up stairs. So if you're gonna be carrying your wheel a lot of places, I don't know, this is, this is a tough one. I would say get another lighter wheel for when you have to carry it around and keep this one as your, your main wheel that you know you don't have to carry places. Okay, so now for a braking test. I'm gonna bring all the wheels up to 30 kilometers an hour and I'm gonna stop as hard as I can. And we will measure the distance. All right, now we know what a cutoff is. So, valuable lesson on these lower powered wheels. You gotta be careful or you will end up on your face. <laughs> I'm not hurt. Uh, I hope it can turn on so we can continue. So let's, uh, let's hope it turns back on. So that concludes this video. Hope you guys found it informative. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Catch you guys in the next one.